Good morning and welcome to RVN TV's Entrepreneur State of Mind show. My name is Krista Smolda and as you know, I interview entrepreneurs. And Joe here, Joe Rychowski, is an entrepreneur and he's the owner of, get this awesome name, JoeWoo.com. Okay, now if that doesn't create curiosity, I don't know what does. Right. So Joe, um, you and I are very similar in that we had a path in corporate America and decided I'm pretty good at some stuff, right? So I'm right. gonna go do it myself. So what I want to do is uh, have you take people through your story. You know, sure. like what led up to today or you know, when you started your company, Joe Wu? Great, absolutely. So what really led me up to it was I had a long career in corporate America. I got out of college, went into college for video production and ah. uh, settled in my career into financial services. I had a lot of fear, so I said, okay, let me just get into the career, see what happens, and it just sort of stuck with me. What do you mean you had a lot of fear? So I had a lot of fear, I had a lot of reservations, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself when I started out, so I just sort of settled like most of the people do, yes. where you go for your dream and you just go and settle, I need money, I need to pay bills, and yes. I need to earn a living, so let me get into uh, financial services and customer service, and that's yeah. what I did. <laughs> And now I'm full circle. Business. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. So I started my career uh, at the banks, the credit card banks, back in the day in the 1990s. Worked my way up into customer service and then did the circuit around to uh, Discover Card, uh, the American Red Cross, and, uh, and Comcast. And had a, had a wonderful career and started you know, coaching people, counseling people. That was a big part of my job, even customers in customer support and, and IT. You're always sort of helping people. I felt like I was a, a therapist always handling yes. crises and things that yes. were, were occurring. So that was a big thing for me. Now that, indus that, that industry of doing this, not only industry, but that role, right, of being crisis manager all the time, it can get exhausting if you're not, if you don't have a certain level of, I guess, like composure. Right. Right, and, and to be able to operate in that on a daily basis and still be sane exactly. is a testament to who you are. Right. You have to be unflappable, that's the thing. You have to really get in there and, and just have the confidence in yourself. And as I was going through my career, I started to gain a lot of confidence. People were trusting me. People were uh, calling on me. Managers that were above me were calling on me to help resolve employee issues, um, how to do employee engagement things, how to turn around their teams. And I said, wow, I've got something here. I really yeah. know what I'm doing. And yes. it just kind of the light bulb went off and said, wow. I said, if I could do this in corporate America, I'm really wondering what I can do in my, uh, in my own career and, right. and venture out on my own. Right. So at what age or point did you say like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go out and do something on my own. Right. It was uh, 39 years old, kind of midlife crisis right before he turned 40. Got yes. a couple gray hairs. And uh, <laughs> I was in, as I said, I was in corporate America. So every couple of years I was actually being displaced. Uh, being at the American Red Cross, they were struggling. So I wound up leading the outsourcing engagement to outsource myself and my entire IT department. Get to Comcast, same thing kind of happens. They're looking at the Time Warner merger. They bring all of us on. And then within about a year and a half, they said, we don't need everybody. The merger's not going to happen. Sorry about your luck. You're, you're without a job. And at that point, uh, I started saying, wow, I said, every couple of years, this is crazy. I, mm -hmm. I want to be in, in charge. I want to be in the driver's seat of my life and, and my career. And that's how Joe was really formed, was basically saying, I need to you know, be my own boss, basically. And I know a lot of things I can do to help people. And people were coming to me that were being displaced. Can you help me with my resume? Yes. Can you help me with some interview tips and things like that? So at that point, I said, okay, I definitely have something here. Let's, let's just go for it and pull the trigger. Let's go all in. And, and you did that. Yep. So you literally quit your job. Yes, did you that start was it. <laughs> quit quit my you, job. Did you start on the side? To do some of this well, stuff? I was doing a little bit on the side. I, I had done some some life coaching through a guy that was with Tony Robbins, and I did some fire walking and things like that. And it was something where I always felt I had to develop myself, had to sharpen the saw, and had to really improve my my skill set every year. That was something I always set a goal to do. And I just thought at that point, I said, well, I've got a lot of skill sets there to help people break through and and go through you know the problems that they've had to to really make themselves better. So let's let's pull it all together. So I just up and left corporate America and, and started started moving forward on it. So that was risky. Very risky, especially with a family and, and kids. Yeah, so how did the family feel about that? <laughs> Everybody was, was kind of like, what are you doing? Are you nuts? Are you absolutely in insane? And I still get that to this day uh, because people you know, see what they want to see. They have their own map of the world and they're not going to see 
your vision. So it was very scary because I thought I was isolated and on an island of my own. I had wonderful support from my wife who still absolutely supports me. My That's kids are good. amazing and wonderful and they just, they, they love. And my daughters mimic me now with videos and things that I do and kind of wants to do the same thing. But uh, it was really uh, just, the support w was there, but a lot of friends were like, you're absolutely nuts. You know, my parents are old school, you're absolutely nuts, what are you doing? <laughs> and yeah. I just said, this is what I need to do. Yeah, you know, you know instinctively. Did you know more in your heart that's what you wanted to do, or was it more in your brain? It's more in my heart. You know, I, I lead with my heart. Uh, I learned a long time ago, you can't always lead with your head because sometimes your head will steer you wrong. You get an over-analysis, the analysis by paralysis, and I just said, you know, I'm feeling it in my heart. I was called to do this. I, you know, and as I was leaving corporate America, I had a client that came to me basically through Facebook Messenger and social media and said, I'm going through a divorce. I don't know what I'm doing. I've seen all your videos. I, I really like this. Um, I'm actually driving to the Delaware Memorial Bridge to jump off the bridge. And just unbelievable, in the middle of the night, this was 2.30 in the morning, and I have my uh, phone always on yes. for emergencies. Yeah. And I responded to it and got in touch with the person and basically got in touch with their family, but talked them out of it. And I kind of felt through some of the conversation, they were they were okay. I didn't feel like they were going to go through with it because they were driving around their, their area and really wasn't migrating towards, towards the bridge, but right. it was still very scary. So I had to basically talk them off the ledge, so to speak, and then reel them back in and help them get the, the help that they, they needed. And now this person's fully divorced on a whole new life, a new career and everything, and just wonderfully happy. And within six months, we were able to, to turn around with the things I was able to do for, for him. Now, if that's not validation to, to say that you made the right decision, that alone Oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and I tell people, because people say, oh, you helped save that person. I said, no, it really wasn't me. I gave them the tools and the education, but that person had to take those steps. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a difference where I see so many people saying, hey, look what I did. I saved this person's life, or I did this and that. Yes, I was part of it, but it was a small part of it. That person had to take those steps yes. and to take the coaching and the tools to climb down off the ledge and turn their life around. It's always about the person doing the work, yes. right? Absolutely. But they need a third party to ask them the hard questions or lead them right. to how they can do it themselves. You need that sounding board. You need somebody right. to bounce ideas off. You need somebody around to always kind of be there to sort of help support you when, when times get tough. Right. So how much happier, because I define entrepreneurship into a happiness journey, right? Like, okay, yeah, there's money involved, there's success. What's your definition of success? To me, it's happiness and peace. So how much happier are you being an entrepreneur than you were before. I'm so much more happier. I mean, it's, it's just totally night and day because you're your own boss. You can have an impact on the world. You feel like you're really making a difference out there and, and you feel like you're really contributing and, and you hit on all those uh, six human needs that we have that we talk about and you're just, you're hitting all those and it's just off the charts, so. And you're, I bet you you're a better parent. Oh yes, absolutely. I mean, I still have I my am. moments. I still have my moments. <laughs> I have my daughter and I, you know, she's got you know, me wrapped around her finger sometimes, yeah. but uh, I feel like, you know, as, as a result of all this coaching, my wife and I are much, much better parents. Our kids do really well. And uh, you know, as I said, my daughters now kind of mimic me with the videos and things like that. So yeah. uh, it's, it's neat to sort of see her, her vision and do what she's doing. Yeah. Do you feel like you've gotten more time being an entrepreneur? than when you were working in corporate America? That's a, that's a great question. I, I think yes and no. I did a lot of traveling in corporate America and, and working at the Red Cross was traveling to, to Washington DC, Northern Virginia, getting up at three in the morning, not getting home till seven at night. So there was a lot of that. Uh, yes, there is there is some time, but sometimes you have to work seven days a week as an entrepreneur. It's uh, In this day and age, it's yes. almost a 24 by seven business, mm -hmm. especially if you're coaching people in the middle of the night when the crisis happens and you get the phone call or the message or you're working late on helping somebody with a resume or somebody calls you with a crisis saying, hey, I've got an interview tomorrow. I have no clue what to do. What do I need to do? And you're right. coaching them at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Right. But I think it's all about balance. You know, I know my family comes first and I have to figure out and schedule, schedule time. I mean, I schedule everything. I have three different calendars and I put everything in. I, I, I pen everything in and make sure I have enough family time and I'm always communicating with my, my wife and kids and make sure that I'm there for them to support them. That's very good. Okay, so why the name Joe Wu? Not, your name is not Joe Wukowski, right? right? <laughs> but why the name Joe Wu? Right, so the name came to me probably at least a good 10, 12 years ago. A uh, boss at the time I was working for at the business, we were going through a lot of outsourcing and a lot of uh, crisis and things like that. And then we had employees uh, just walking off the job. We, we actually had a person actually drive the car up through the building, crash through the window because of a dispute with their family member. And it was just, it felt like it was all hell breaking loose. Yes. And I was just unflappable. I was like, okay, what do we need to do? I was kind of like the general. I got in there and said, yeah. okay, we need to handle these things. We need to stop worrying about all these things that are falling apart. The wheels are coming off. 
we got it. We got a business to run, Thanks. and I had managers above me coming to me saying, "How are you doing this? What are you doing to keep your team motivated?" So my boss in one meeting said, "You know, I just want to recognize you. You're this this Joe Cool kind of guy, but Joe Cool is Joe Cool. You know, you got this woo about you." And he said, "You know, you're Joe Woo," and it just sort of stuck at that point. So every time I walked around, people, "There's Joe Woo. There he is, the unflappable." person and the name just stuck with me and uh, I see that's a cool business name that that's my essence that's who I am I'm a yeah. flappable I'm a loving caring person I just love to help people and it to me that's that's who I am now does he know that that that's the name of your company now well I haven't seen him in in a number of okay. years so uh, we haven't spoken he moved on and, and moved to another uh, part of the country so we, okay. let, we got out of contact but at the time I did say to him I said you know if something does work out where I'm going to be my boss one day. I love the name, so that's and, awesome. uh, and it just stuck with me. You find him on social media. Yeah, exactly. That's what I've been trying. That's actually what I've been trying to do. I haven't yet. So just to let him know, just yep. to give him credit. It wasn't big on social media back then. So right. okay, so um, we have to take a break. Okay. Um, when we get back, we're going to learn all about what the heck is JoeWoo.com. What do you do? How do you help people? What are the services that you perform? And um, we have a couple pictures to show people too. Sounds great. All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Thanks. platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Welcome back, everyone, to Entrepreneur State of Mind. I'm Krista Smolda, and I'm having a great conversation with Joe Rachowski. He's the owner of JoeWoo.com, coolest name ever, and that was Thank given you. to you by a former boss, Yes. right? Yep. Because Joe can just like woo through any, <laughs> any sort of chaos. I like that. Which is very important, yep. especially as a life coach, right? Chaos is a part of life. We yes. have a lot of chaos going yes. on, especially in this, this day, day and age. So yep. All right, so. Handle. What does your company do? So I help students, I help high school and college students make a career transition uh, through the first couple of years of their career because for me, as I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of fear, I settled, so I help them really get established in their career and in their life to make good decisions, avoid a lot of the problems and challenges and settling in their careers. And then I also help the established professional, like myself who was displaced every couple of years, what happens when you have a crisis in 
the job? What happens when the wheels come off and you say, oh shit, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I don't have a resume. I don't know how to interview. Mm -hmm. Where do I go? What do I do? So help folks make a successful career transition. But I'm also, I think, more of a uh, kind of a therapist in a way to, to help people really through the mental blocks and challenges that they have because that's yeah. really where a lot of the things come from. So where do you see that most people get stuck in their life or their career? Most people get stuck just, just really in their life. Um, it's a lot of uh, surface level things that I see. They get stuck in their head because what happens is you have people saying, I can't find a job. Uh, where do I work out? What do I do? And a lot of it's excuses. They'll say, I can't find a job, but there's resources out there. So when we get stuck in our head, we become less resourceful. So I have to help them break through all those patterns, those bullshit excuses basically mm -hmm. of, well, I, you know, I don't have enough money for a gym. Well, where are you living? Well, there's a high school across from me. Is there a track? Is there a space to run? then go do it. So we work through a lot of those things and I do a lot of uh, extreme things like fire walking, walking over broken glass to really get people past those excuses and, and fears to say, look, your life is limitless if you, if you choose to. It's your choice to, to be successful or not. Right. So imagine if I, you, I think about the college student or the younger generation having a life coach, right? Like that wasn't even heard of for us to ever have any kind of a coach. Right. It was our parents that were our coaches right. that told us to do what they did. Exactly. Okay, so what, not that that's not good advice, but it's not always the right advice at that age, right? So we go and do like you did and I did, well, we're gonna go get a, a job in business and make money, right? right? So um, how open are, is that younger generation to your coaching? Because I think about, you know, an, an 18 year old or someone like right. that and, or my son, right, who's in high school. Do you find a little resistance there? There's some resistance, but I think for the most part, a lot of the kids today are very open to, to coaching. They want to learn. And there's a lot, of, I think, misconceptions about the millennials. They're not hardworking. I've worked with a lot of millennials. I've had interns, and I've seen so many millennials, and they're very hardworking. They just sometimes don't have a lot of a lot of direction and people say they're lazy, but they're not. But they're, they're very open to, to coaching. Sometimes they get a little concerned with the criticism. I mean, I tell it like it is and say, hey, you're not doing your job. And they get a little bit upset. So I work with them and realize, okay, I have to be somewhat of a psychologist or to help them realize, okay, it's not that bad. You know, I'm giving you feedback, it's okay. Yeah. And we've had this whole fifth place trophy thing where everybody thinks, you know, they're gonna get a trophy for just showing up to work. And that's part of where I try to help these students realize, look, you're showing up to work, you're not going to get a trophy, you're not going to get rewarded. It's the hard work and dedication you need to put in to be successful, and you lead by example, and that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they've heard that from good parents, if right. they have good parents, but listening to them is different than listening to you. Right, because you listen, you listen to your parents, and you know, as kids, we, we hear what our parents are going to say, we'd always do what you know, they say, because <laughs> they're their parents, that's, yeah. that's what it is, and I did the same thing. But it's always good to have a sounding board or a coach out there, somebody to really kind of bounce ideas and, and thoughts well, off of. I think of, it's right. better, because yeah. you know, what I tell my son, it's, it's an eye roll. Right. But if someone else says the same exact thing, I mean, that could be a, of tremendous value to parents out there. Exactly. To yes. hire someone like Joe to help their child because, I hate to say it, they're just probably going to listen to you more. Right, exactly, because they, they've heard that same thing from their parents. Sometimes the message gets worn out because you hear it time and time again, you need to do better, you need to focus better. And a lot of times as parents, we're so busy. Both parents are working now. Yes. We're on our phones constantly. We're getting calls late at night, middle of the night and weekends. We're just working longer and harder, and there's so many activities. So as, as a parent, that message sometimes gets tuned out. Um, and sometimes it's more surface level. You're just saying, hey, go do a better job. Well, I get past, I'm, I'm not a surface level guy. I go below the surface to figure out what's causing that issue with that person. Why are they acting like that? And how can I help them uh, break through those fears? Because it's not on the surface, it's usually below. There's something deeper causing the issue. It is. Yeah. And so how do you bring that out? So let's say I hired you and I, we had our first coaching session. Yes. Is that how you do it over the phone, or how, how do you do this? Typically, I do an intake first. I, okay. I, I do it over the phone, and if I have people around the country, I do Zoom calls. I use the power of social media and the internet to actually do that. I do like to meet face to face because I think you see the person more realistic. But in this digital day and age, you sometimes have to coach people uh, through the phone, or yes. it just whatever whatever really works. So we do an intake, usually a good hour, to find out what the problems are. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of questions they have to fill out up to the beginning to kind of really find out. And usually when I hear their story and I kind of see the pattern, I know right away, okay, there's, there's certain patterns that we always run. You know, we're running these, these certain patterns of anger, depression, happiness, sadness, whatever it is. And I can tell usually right away 
what they're sort of running, and then I start formulating the approach at that point to how do I work with them? You know, is it a six week uh, module that I need to do? Is it eight weeks? Is it three weeks? Where are they at? And I do a calibration, you know, on a scale of one to 10, where are you at in your life? 10 being the highest. In most cases, people come at a level four or five. They're darn happy or they're just not where they need to be. And then by the time they're done with me, they're usually at a level eight. Sometimes you go a little bit higher, but level eight's really where you want to get to a level of fulfillment in life and in your career. Right, okay, so you do that through a process or a series of however many sessions you yep. think that yes. they need. So when you started your business, okay, you, you suddenly go, okay, I'm not this anymore, I'm a coach. Right. <laughs> right, so there's like a lot of branding and marketing that has to be yes. done. So how did you do that? Did you utilize the internet? Utilize the internet. I did a lot of just research. I followed some gurus out there that I saw were being successful. Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. uh, we talked about earlier, one that was very successful hitting social media, and I just sort of modeled myself after what he was doing. He talked about video being very, very important, yes. and I felt the same way. It had to be me doing the video, but I felt you're reaching people. If I can't reach people via phone, you know, they need to see me. They're not going to see me in the flesh. They need to see mm -hmm. me on video. You're going to see a lot of me doing what I need to do. So uh, yes, video, doing videos out there. Uh, I did a lot of writing for some, some online publications, uh, some blogs, I had some podcasts and things like that. So I used all the power of the internet and, and social media to start reaching people and build up an audience that way. Right, how many years are you in business now as Joe Wu? Uh, three years in business now. Okay, Yep. And awesome. it's, still, it's still growing, so it's still growing the audience. It's an amazing thing every week to see new people catching on and latching on. Right, right, so video content is king. You can't emphasize that enough, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can do podcasts, but what I've seen in the research I've done, video is really it, and you have to make it about your, your clients. You've got to make it, you know, what am I doing? What am I teaching them versus, oh, look at me, look at my story. That's important to tell people your story, but you got to resonate with them and say, okay, this is how you negotiate better salary. This mm -hmm. is how you can get out of depression. This is how you can write a better resume. So it's a lot of career tips, life tips, and, and things like that in the video, and it works works really well. Yeah, okay, so you became really popular on social media. Yes. And got some followers, and um, particularly parents, yes. I guess. that's You work with a lot of parents, right? Yes, I mean, I work with a lot of parents as clients, and then obviously their students, they, they trust me with their kids to, to help coach them and educate them. Yeah, so so we have a, a picture of you with all of your social media icons, and I want you to tell the story of how <laughs> you started to create social media training out of this. So basically, a couple parents had watched my, my Instagram videos, my Instagram stories, they saw me on LinkedIn, they saw me on Snapchat, and a couple of them said, you're all over the place you know I see I see an ad popping up I, I see I was going on Facebook and I saw a CNN article somehow and then in the middle of the CNN article there was a video so I figured out a way how to do ads and, and do it really well oh, and cool. they're like how are you doing this and all of a sudden one parent said you know I really like to know what's going on because I, I don't understand this social media I need to understand what my kids doing I have I have no clue so I started doing this this research research and I said now let me figure out what's going on with the kids and I was just shocked all the numbers like nine almost nine hours a day kids are spending on on social media oh, and just the bullying and things that were going on so I just reached out to some parents in the area and said hey you know you brought up a good point why don't we uh, why don't I help educate you a little bit? So this actually just started to take off in the last month where I've already done some speaking engagements to help educate parents and school administrators on the dangers of social media, but also the beauty of social media. There's a lot of great yes. things happening, but how to really be proactive as a parent because it has to start with you and it just, just took off like a wildfire. Good for you. And that's a lead source for you, I'm sure, too, yes, right? Yes, so exactly. In front of all these people, and then you go, hey, by the way, you need a coach? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, by the way, this is what I do. I do coaching for your, yourself or your son or daughter, and they're just like, wow, this is great. You do a lot, and you just, you have to sometimes follow the tea leaves. What's working might not be working in a month, yes. and yes. You, you hear something and somebody says something, it's a trigger. I'm always listening, like, okay, that sounds interesting. I need to follow that tea leaf a little bit and see what happens. Mm -hmm. and this so you also started to make these little one-minute videos, and you throw them, I think, on YouTube and different yes. places. So um, we have a picture of that, too, with some money in the background. Tell me about it. <laughs> what, what are they called? What are these so little this is called? So this called? is called the Career Tip Minute, and okay. I started it about two years ago. I felt there really, I was looking at all the videos on YouTube, and I just felt there really wasn't a lot of good quick information out there. There was a lot of BS going on where people mm -hmm. were just going on for 15, 20 minutes. And I said, the attention span today, people are on the train, they're on a bus, they're, they're in transit, they're at the airport. 
how do I create something that's simple to the point and very easy? And, the, and it just started, I said, I need to do a tip in a minute. So it's expanded to about a minute, minute and a half at most, maybe two minutes. So I call it a career tip minute and every week or so I do a new video on a topic of, let's say it's social media, how to negotiate better salary, how to interview, how to network, um, how to find a coach or a mentor or what have yeah. you, just a lot of different career and life tips. And it's really taken off and I've had thousands of, of views on it and people just are starting to share it, which is, which is great. And that becomes another lead source. Exactly, for you. right. There's lead sources, and you know, people put comments, and you know, as soon as you see that, you reach out to them, say, "Hey, is there anything I can do for you today? What can I help you with?" And it turns into potential, uh, potential lead. Yes, building those connections, you've got to put some value yeah. out there to get it back. Right, and you got to tip the scale. That's the thing. I think a lot of people, as entrepreneurs, they get in and say, "I got to make the money. I got to make the money. I got to do this." But you got to give value first. You got to tip yes. that scale, where the scale's got to tip in the favor of your client, saying, "Wow, this guy's providing a lot of value, or this girl's providing a lot of value." Uh, I really like them, they're good. Now at some point I can sell them into a product that makes sense for them. Yep. And you do it that way instead of you know, all up front, let, uh, let me get the money in. It's not gonna work that way. You're not gonna be successful. You are so right with that one, so right. So you're a busy guy Yes. now. <laughs> do you have hours or is it pretty much whatever? It's pretty much 24 seven. Like this morning I was up about four o'clock this morning responding to some emails. Uh, I had a couple things that were going on. So I had about three hours of sleep, but you just, you make it up at times. It's just, you have to go with the flow sometimes and you just have to really understand as an entrepreneur, if you love what you do, um, time really is irrelevant and it you just got you got to bounce yourself out I mean you got to know when to to kind of stop and you got to know when to spend time with the family or know when your body's breaking down like last week I was a little mm -hmm. under the weather and said okay yeah. I got to dial it down a little bit keep yeah. myself healthy to, to meet all my clients needs and demands yep so what are some tips you have for an entrepreneur that's thinking about I'm just gonna leave it all behind and go over here to this side. A lot, of, a lot of good tips from a lot of experience. The wear and tear of being an entrepreneur, it's a wonderful experience, but sometimes it can also be, you know, hell not to make bad about it, but there are periods where you just, you start questioning yourself. I think the yeah. biggest thing is confidence. You've gotta have unflappable confidence in yourself because you're gonna get knocked down every single day. I mean, I had a stretch last year where a month, it seemed like nothing was going right. I had people saying, what are you doing? You're stupid, you're, you're a moron, you're insane for doing this, it's never gonna, fully take off and you go through peaks and valleys in any business and I had mm -hmm. family members I had friends desert me and I was just like wow this is this is crazy and then sometimes your videos you put out there they don't work uh, you put a blog out there you might get a lot of negative comments but you have to realize that's that's part of the business you're gonna have a lot of wins you're gonna have a lot of losses and if you remain confident in yourself and the belief in yourself that you can do this that's that's more than half the battle the belief. Um, I think the b other big thing is patience. Uh, I'm not a patient guy when it comes to traffic jams. My wife will tell you that <laughs> I can't stand sitting in traffic jams, but uh, you have to have patience as an entrepreneur. So many people see the Facebooks and they see Mark Zuckerberg being successful so quickly, but it took about three or four years oh, yeah. for that to really take off to, to, to get the fire it needed. And yeah. it takes time. It takes years sometimes to grow the business. It's not always going to happen overnight. People now see Elon Musk. They see Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Jeff Bezos was doing it for three or four years before it really, yeah. really took off. So you have to realize you have to have that patience and discipline uh, to do it. And I think those are the two, two key things you got to have to be Trust an entrepreneur. Trust the process. Yep. Trust, Trust the process. It. So we are going to wrap our interview up, but um, I want people to know how they get, can get in touch with you. We have a funny picture. There's a quick story behind the banana here. Um, uh, there it is. Okay, there you go. That's Joe Wu. <laughs> That's What's it. that all about? So that is uh, a banana, one of my kids' uh, stuffed animals. And what happened was, I, at the time, this was a couple of years ago, I had three phones. We had the home phone, I had two cell phones, <laughs> and they all rang literally simultaneously. It was like a music production. And my kids were laughing, and they're sitting there trying to do their homework. They said, Dad, you're so busy. So I quickly made light of the situation. I grabbed the banana, put it up to me, and said, hello, I need some help now. I got phones ringing. Who do I answer first? <laughs> and the kids just laughed it off and were hysterical. So I, have, I had a picture done like this, where this just kind of shows how I'm always available, and a little bit yeah. of funny and, and seriousness. But, yeah, um, you have to have fun. You have to have fun important. with it, right. That's, that's so for real, tell yes. people, look at that camera, tell yes. people how they can find you, connect with you, go to your website. Easiest way to find me, it's joewu.com, J-O-E-W-O.com. All my contacts information's on there. If you just Google me, uh, you'll find me appearing on probably any social media site. If you look me up on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, but joewu.com is, is where you go to find me and I'm always available there. Awesome, that's very easy to remember. Yes. So anyone that said that wasn't a good name, <laughs> you know, 
Should we get our curse in now? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I got, I got, I think I got a few, and so I was being a little bit reserved, but that's good. All right. Well, listen, I'd love to invite you back, and you know, at some Absolutely. other time, and find out how much better you're doing than you're already now, and talk about. This was such a pleasure. Again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Honored so glad to be I here, met you. And I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad to meet you as well. Thank you, and good luck. Thanks. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Everyday Elder Care.